Kingdom. We are from group 5. So this is our cafe's poster. So today we are going to present about the background, the location, target market, menu and price list, potential problem and solution, internal and external factors. So now I will pass to my friends. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Rabiatul Adawiyah binti Sulaiman, metric number 263466. So today our group will present about the food establishment that we want to open at the University Utara Malaysia. So firstly, I will explain about the background of food establishment that we want to open at the UUM. Uh, we decided to open the cafe and we named it as a Coffee Mind Cafe. This is because uh, we, all, we only focus on serving the coffee as a beverages and some delicious dessert. And we believe that all the coffee lovers will love to come to this cafe. Uh, this type of cafe is classic and the theme is aesthetic because we believe that everyone loves classic views and it is suitable for everyone. So, the customer who come to our cafe will uh, enjoy their coffee and eat some dessert in some in a most comfortable and cozy way. Moreover, uh, the people uh, people also can come to this cafe, uh, this cafe uh, to get some relaxations. After that, uh, we choose to open this Coffee Mind Cafe at the UUM Sports Centre. This is because uh, we realised that there is no food uh, food establishment that uh, at the UUM Sports Centre. So we feel that uh, we will have less competitor. In addition, UUM Sports Centre is one of the places that become attraction of most of the people, especially during evening. They will do many activities and events there. So, and uh, we feel that evening is also the perfect time to drink a cup of coffee. Uh, for the bonus, uh, it is also located in the middle of the university and student residence. So, we think that it is a perfect place or uh, we call it a strategic place as, uh, to establish a cafe at the UUM Sports Center. Next, our target market is definitely UUM students and staff because our place is uh, located in the UUM and people who always do activities uh, and events there is also from UUM. So, we believe that we will achieve our target market. Hi everyone, my name is Nur Anisha Hirabinti Obakar, metric number 264890. So now, I will introduce you with three food items and one beverage item that being offered on our menu. With the price list that I already listed and already calculated it using the standardized receipt. So first, I will introduce you with our menu. So this is our menu. So here we have strawberry icebox cakes which we sell it at 8 ringgit per pieces. Next, we have peanut butter cups and it is only 2 ringgit and 50 cent per pieces. We also have sugar cookie s'mores which is 4 ringgit per pieces. And last one for the beverage item is the one and only our ice latte which only 4 ringgit and 50 cent per cups. So here are the examples of how the 4 listed menu items are priced. So first we have ice latte. Um, the standard order of ice latte is a glass contain one cup of ice, half cup of milk, uh, and three tablespoons of strongly brewed coffee. So after having the conversion factor, we got the total food cost is two ringgit and thirty one cent. Thus, we decide to sell one cup of ice latte for four ringgit and fifty cent. Second, we have strawberry icebox cake. The standard order of strawberry icebox cake for nine serving is the plate contains five cup of sweetened whipped cream which the same value as 300 gram. We also put 11 large rectangular graham cracker and 3 cups of chopped strawberry approximately at 450 gram. After having the conversion factor, we got the total food cost is 6 ringgit and 37 cents. Thus, we decided to sell 1 piece of strawberry iceberg cake for 8 ringgit per piece. For third food, we have peanut butter cups. The standard order of peanut butter cups for six servings is the plate contains uh, three tablespoons of powdered sugar, half cup of creamy peanut butter, approximately 120 gram, and also one cup of melted chocolate, approximately uh, 170 gram. So after having the conversion factor, as you can see here, 
We got the total food cost is two ringgit and eight cent. Uh, this we decides to sell one pieces of peanut butter cup for three ringgit and fifty cent. Last food item is sugar cookie s'mores. So the standard order of sugar cookie s'mores is a plate contained of two fun size of milky candy bar, two sugar cookies, um, one large marshmallow for one serving. So after having the conversion factor, as you can see here, we got the total food cost is two ringgit and sixteen cent. This we decide to sell for four ringgit. So that's all from me. Thank you. and hi everyone my name is no diana betty anwar and my metric number is 264924 today i am going to present about the potential problems faced by the food establishment regarding food cost control and pricing and the potential solutions for these problems there are four problems that can cause food costs to rise and suggestions for ways to cope with increase of food costs the first problem faced by the food establishments is employee theft. Any stealing, use or misuse of employer's assets without their permission to do so is called as employee theft. Employees normally steal from the employers. Money is one of the most common assets that are usually being stolen from employers. One of the solutions for this problem is to create a system in place to track food from the moment it is imported from the supplier to the restaurant to the moment it is sold to the customers. The second problem faced by the food establishment is not using a consistent portion control. The reason why some of the restaurants nowadays are so successful is because they have many portions under control. So we need to start managing the portion with correct size of serving utensils, accurate food scales and appropriate storage size. The third problem is having a poor bookkeeping. Food suppliers usually make mistakes on invoice such as charging double and not delivering food that is listed on the invoice. For the solution, we need to have someone we trust monitoring the weekly food orders to make sure they are all accounted for and match the invoice. Lastly, our food establishment facing a problems of wasting food. The chefs usually throw away the leftover cooking ingredients. For the solution, I think we can use as much food as possible to increase food establishment's profit and reduce the cost of food. A well-trained chef will know how to use all parts of an ingredient with minimal waste. So now I will present about the internal and external factors. So the internal factor, the first one is uh, company objective. This has considerable influence on the pricing decisions of a firm. Pricing policies and strategy must be in conformity with the firm pricing objectives. For example, if a company desire a target third rate of return on capital investment, then the pricing decisions are so made that the total sales revenue from all products exceed the total cost by a sufficient margin to provide the desired return on the total capital investment. Next, cost of production. Pricing decisions are based on the cost production. If a product is priced less than the cost of production, the firm has to suffer the loss, but the cost of production can be reduced by coordinate the activities of production properly the firm can reduce the price accordingly. Next, distribution channel. Distribution channel also sometimes affect the price. There are many middlemen working in the channel of distribution between the manufacturer and the consumer. Each of them has to be compensated for the services rendered. This compensation must be included in the ultimate price which the consumer pays. Because of these costs, sometimes it happens the price of products becomes so high that the consumer reject it. For external factor, the first one will be nature of market and demand. What is the expectation of the market about the product and services? What is the demand level for the product at different prices? Market must also be understood whether there is monopoly, 
perfect competition, oligopoly, monopolistic competition or duopoly. To understand demand, the supplier or marketer prepares demand curves for all product at different prices. The marketer prepares separate curves for normal product and pristine goods. In, in addition to understanding price and quantity relationship, the marketer must determine the price elasticity of demand to understand price sensitivity of customers. The second one is macroeconomy trends. The marketer may also have to consider the economy condition prevailing the market while fixing the prices. At the time of recession, the consumer may have less money to, pass, to spend, so the marketer may reduce the prices in order to influence the buying decision of the consumers. So the third one is suppliers. They supply the required item of production to the firm. As already pointed out, the firm can reduce the price if it can reduce the cost of production. If not, the usual tendency is to charge the increased cost of production to the consumer. For example, the price hike for petrol or diesel will automatic automatically increase the price of vegetables, fruits, provisions, and so on. If a firm could get the required raw materials at reasonable rates or from suppliers, then it can also price the goods at a less rate. The last one is consumer behavior. The various consumer and businesses that buy a company's product or services may have an influence in the pricing decision. Their nature and behavior for the purchase of a particular product brand or service and so on affect pricing when their number is large that's all from me thank you in conclusion i hope that we can achieve our cafe mission ambition we will try our best to make our cafe a best place for people to come and have their good time here we hope our menu provided can attract many people to come to our cafe we also will improve any problem that are faced by our food establishment by using the solution that have been provided before. Thank you.